In this one, we're going to set up a layered landscape material and set up some masks for it. So I'm going to right click here in the content browser, go to material, we'll just create a material. Call this one M landscape. And we take a look at it. With the main node selected here, I'm going to turn on use material attributes. And then I'm going to type in the word landscape. And what I want is the landscape layer blend. So go ahead and connect that. Over here with the landscape layer blend node selected, I'm going to create three entries. I'm going to call the first one red, the second one green, and you can see they are updating over here. And the third one blue. I'm going to pull off of red and type in make material attributes. And we're going to get this giant thing here. Right click over there and type in constant three vector. This will give us a color. And I'm going to set the color to red. Piped into layer red. We can select those two, do a control C and a control V. And then I'm going to set this to green. Doesn't need to be mathematically green, just visually green. And then for this, we'll make this one blue and hit OK. So this is a very, very simple layered landscape material. It has three layers, red, green, and blue. And it'll do just fine as a demo here to talk about the layer mask stuff. All right, so we're going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to right click, create a material instance, call it MI Landscape, and save it. We can select the landscape here, the landscape actor, and then right here is where we want to put our landscape material. So everything has gone all black. We're going to go over to the landscape tab and then go to paint. So you may see layers populated in here already. It may be that if you create, if you already got a landscape material, when you create your landscape, there's a slot to drop this in. This may be populated at that point, but if you don't see anything here, it's fine. Just click this icon right here and it will detect the layers that are on the material. Hopefully there we are. Now, any painting that we do, we need to store it. So we have to create this little landscape blending info object, weight blended layer, and it's going to stick these in a folder in the same location as wherever your map is stored. Okay, so here are our, I guess really we're, we're seeing the top one here. So I'm gonna go over to manage and then select each one of these. I have already created these layers in Photoshop and they are not 2048, they are 2017. So we'll grab layer one, layer two, and then layer three. And we'll hit import. Let's go ahead and save these while we're at it. You can see what the effect is. It's just a mask that will control where these layers are showing up. Now on top of this, we can come over. I'm in paint mode and I want to paint some blue stuff. I can do so. It might take a second here. You can see it's preparing the shaders. We'll give it a moment, but it's starting to come in. So it's not painting at 100% opacity, but this is just kind of a starting point, right? Like setting the masks up doesn't preclude us from doing whatever we want on the painting side. It's just kind of a head start. So big picture, what we're going to look at next is how to convert this image into masks that we can use to drive the location. So 
sort of a starting configuration for our landscape materials, which will look a little bit more complicated because we're going to go grab some cool stuff off of Fab. So the next thing that we need to do here is we've got to figure out how to modify this to get some layer masks. So that will require getting into the texture graph stuff. I don't think I'm going to have enough time in this video to do that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. I didn't actually need to import them. Unreal is happy to keep those as external assets. Uh, the other thing I want to do, because we are going to be using Fab, I'll just quickly show you how to access it just in case you're not sure. It isn't as clear as it probably should be. So this is the Epic Launcher. If you go to, uh, I can't remember which library it is. Yeah, it's going to be this uh, library tab up here and you scroll down, you will see the Fab UE plugin. It looks like I have an update. Anyway, so you just hit install to engine. And then once that's done, there may be a plugin you need to enable. I can't remember. Let's take a look. Yeah, so we want to turn this on, which will require a restart. And then you will see a little tab right here called Fab. And if I click on it, it's going to open up and give us access to the, the wide world here of stuff we can get in some cases for free. In many cases, they are paid assets. But the best quality stuff I have found are assets from Quixel, which at the time of this recording are still free, but that may change. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in Quixel in my search. You can see it's going to bring up just a ton of random stuff. If I click this little icon here, in any one of these that will add a from quixel filter and then i can just come and type in something like rock and any of these spheres is going to be valid so i'm going to roll through here offline and find a few options that i think look cool and then i'll do my best to give you the information necessary so that you can recreate my selection it's not as easy as it should be there should be a little identifier but that's just not the case, uh, at least as far as I know. Anyway, this is something that I will do offline and I'll show you what the, the selections are. I think I'm probably going to pick four. We'll do uh, a couple of sands and a couple of rocks or maybe maybe five with uh, three rocks and something along those lines. So anyway, I'll take care of that offline and uh, show you what the, uh, what the end result is here in just a moment. All right, so here are a few that I've downloaded. I don't know if they're going to look good together or not, but whatever, it's, uh, it's a start. So a couple things worth mentioning. You want to make sure that you download the high version. So in other words, if you find something that you like, make sure this is set to high quality because without the high quality, you're not necessarily going to get the height map, which is critical for displacement. This is what it'll look like. If you get the medium, we're just going to have an ORM mask. So this is occlusion, roughness, and metalness, but obviously there's no metalness in this rock. So it's just a, an empty channel there. So just make sure you get the high. So these are the ones that I grabbed. There's like this pebbly rock thing, beach gravel with pebbles, jagged rock, rock cliff, another rock cliff, rock surface, whatever, right? So you should go through and grab something, grab a few of these. And we don't need all as many as I've grabbed here, but uh, it's easier to just kind of do it in one fell swoop. You may also notice that they're not saved. If I were to shut the project down at this point, these would go away. It's a peculiarity. So you just want to make sure that once you've downloaded stuff from Fab, you just come over to Fab here in the content browser and just click save all. And that'll go ahead and make sure that when you open the project again, you have the files that you expect to have. Cool. In the next one, we're going to take a look at doing that texture graph stuff. It's really cool. I think you're going to like it. And then we can get the mask plugged in and take a look at something that is approximating the final result.